The if function is one of Notion's most versatile and widely used functions. It allows you to specify multiple outputs for various conditions. So in other words, if your specified condition is true, return output A. Otherwise, return output B. So for example, you can test whether each person's exam score is greater than 70%. And if it is greater than 70%, you can return the string pass, otherwise return fail. And as you'll see, you can nest if functions to define more than two outcomes. So for our exam scores here, we can also return the associated letter grade. So let's explore the syntax of the if function and how to nest it to accommodate multiple conditions. And then we'll look at a practical example that you'll find widely applicable. Now, if you're unfamiliar with functions, I encourage you to go back to the lesson about formula fundamentals. Many of the concepts you learn there will be essential to understanding the if function. And one of those concepts is arguments. So the if function takes three arguments. And the first is the condition, which is an expression that returns a Boolean value or true or false. And typically this is a test performed with a comparison operator such as greater than. So for our pass-fail example, the first argument would test whether the exam score property is greater than 70% or 0.7. And then the second argument is the output if the first argument returns true. And so this can be any expression, which of course is a combination of values, operators, or functions that returns a single value. So going back to our pass-fail example, the second argument is simply the text string pass. And then the third argument is the output if the first argument returns false. And this too can be any expression, but the data type of its output must match the data type of the second argument. So in our example, whereas the second argument was the string pass, the third argument is the simple string fail. So given these arguments, we can rephrase our articulation of the if function to say, if argument one is true, return argument two, otherwise return argument three. So here's the full formula for our pass-fail example, where the first argument tests whether the exam score property is greater than or equal to 0.7. And then the second argument is that text string pass. And the third argument is the text string fail. And of course, these are separated by commas. Now, a lot of times the if function is going to be easier to visualize within these code blocks that we've mentioned before, where each argument occupies its own line and is indented. So we'll structure our if function this way, where you can see now that each argument occupies its own line in a way that makes it easy to visualize. So with its three arguments, the if function allows you to specify outputs for two conditions, when the first argument is true and when it's false. But by nesting if functions, you can account for additional conditions. So for the second or third arguments, you can actually use inner if functions, which creates a sort of choose your own adventure scenario where each possible outcome of the first test prescribes another test with its own possible outcomes. So we'll update our code block here with a silly little example. And we'll say for our first argument, if dog is the same as cat, then we want to return dogs are the same as cats. And for our third argument, we're going to use another if function. So we'll create this if with that keyword, open it up with a parenthesis, and go ahead and add the closing parenthesis to keep this organized. Now, I deleted a comma here at the beginning, so you want to make sure that each of your arguments do conclude with that comma, the first and second arguments that would be. So for this third argument, which is our nested if function, this is going to be what the formula executes if the first argument returns false. So we're not going to return dogs are the same as cats, but what we're going to do is we're going to conduct another test. So we'll say if dog equals fish. And then this nested if function is going to have its own 
arguments two and three or possible outcomes. So if dog does equal fish, and this test will only be conducted if dog is not equal to cat, we're going to return dogs and fish are the same. And then for the third argument of the nested if function, we know that dog does not equal fish and dog does not equal cat. We'll just say dogs are like none other. So this is a nice clean way of visualizing this complex formula with a nested if function. And what we can do is we can copy its contents paste it into the URL bar of the browser, and that's going to make it friendly to Notion's formula window. So down here in the sample database, we will just paste that in here. Now this includes no property references, so all of the outputs are gonna be the same. And of course, because dog does not equal cat and dog does not equal fish, then dogs are like none other. So in a more practical example, we are going to reference this grade property to return either senior, junior, or sophomore for each student. So we'll rename our formula property here to year. And then for the first argument we want to test is the grade 12. So we will replace this first test we already have in place with a property reference referencing the grade property. And if it's equal to 12, then we want to return for the second argument, senior. And then for the third argument, this is going to be what the function executes if the first argument returns false. So we know that the grade is not 12. What we want to know is the grade equal to 11. So what we can do is just copy our existing test here and paste it and then just change that 12 to an 11. And if that returns true, we want the year to be junior. And because we're only working with 12, 11, and 10 here, we know that if it's not 12 and it's not 11, then it's going to be 10, in which case we want to return sophomore. So once again, we can copy the contents of our code block, paste it into our URL bar, recopy it, come into our year formula property, paste it, and we can see here that the grades 10 are sophomores, 12s are seniors, and 11s are juniors. So this example employs just one nested if function. It's the third argument of our outer if function, but we can accommodate even more conditions by nesting more if functions, and that's exactly what our letter grade example does. So let's recreate that now that we understand the arguments and nesting. So what we want to do, we want to test whether the exam score is greater than or equal to 90%. So what we'll do is update this property reference to the exam score property and then update the comparison operator to greater than or equal to and make that a 0.9. So if it is 90%, or greater, we want the letter grade to be an A. And then for the third argument, this is if it's not greater than or equal to 90%, in which case we want to test if it's greater than 80%. So we'll copy that first test, paste it, and then just update that 9 to an 8. And if it is greater than or equal to 80%, then we want to return a B. So here's where we add another layer of nesting. We know that it's not greater than 90%. It's not greater than 80%. So we want to create another test where we're determining whether the score is greater than 70%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this nested if, and I'm going to replace this third argument with another if, and then we want to indent it for our nice visualization. So now we're working within the third layer of our nesting, and we want to test whether that exam score is greater than 70%, in which case we want to return a C. And then we have one more layer of nesting to do. We want to test whether the exam score is greater than 60% which is going to return a D. So if we know that it's not greater than or equal to 90% 
80%, 70%, or 60%, then the only remaining option is a failing grade of F. So that's where our nesting stops. So what we can do is copy these contents, paste them into the address bar, copy them again, and come down to our letter grade property, paste, submit, and our letter grades are displayed according to the exam score. So let's move on to a practical example that nicely demonstrates these core concepts of the if function, and that is the Eisenhower matrix. So if you're unfamiliar with the Eisenhower matrix, it's a method of prioritizing tasks. So for each task, you specify whether it's urgent or not urgent and important or not important, and the matrix instructs you to do it delegate it, schedule it, or eliminate it. So for example, if a task is not urgent but important, then the matrix is going to instruct you to delegate that task. So we're going to recreate this in Notion. So within this tasks database here, we have an urgency property and an importance property. And each of these properties is a select property with two options. For urgency, you can choose urgent or not urgent. And for importance, you can choose important or not important. And so that's going to give you four different combinations. We can have urgent and important. We can have urgent and not important. And then we can have not urgent and important and not urgent and not important. And what we want to do is compose a formula using the if function that's going to return the action associated with the combination of urgency and importance. So of course, we're going to do this within a code block for a nice visualization. So we're going to kick it off with an if function. And what we want to do first is we want to test whether the urgency property is urgent. So we'll reference that urgency property and we'll ask, is it equal to the text string urgent? And so the second argument is going to be what to do if it is urgent, in which case we want to test whether the importance property is important. So we will start another if function. This is going to be our first nested if serving as the second argument of our outer if function. And we want to know is importance equal to important. So if importance is equal to important and we already know that urgency is equal to urgent, then the second argument of our first nested if function is going to be do because we have urgent and we have important. And then the third argument of our nested if function is going to be for the instances where urgency is urgent, but importance is not important, in which case we want to delegate. So we've completed our second argument with a nested if function. So we're going to add this comma here, and we're now creating the third argument of the outer if function. So this is going to be if urgency is not urgent. And once again, we want to test if importance is important. So I'm going to copy the second argument, paste it as the third argument. It's not going to need a comma. So for the second argument of the second nested if function, we are returning a value for instances where importance is important, but urgency is not urgent, in which case we want to schedule our task. And then for the third argument of our second nested if function, we know that importance is not important and urgency is not urgent in which case we are eliminating. So what we can do is copy the contents, paste into the URL bar, copy again, and then paste into our action property, and we have an error. And we like to keep these errors within this video and solve them because you're inevitably going to encounter these issues, so it's helpful to work through them together. So what I'm seeing here is we don't have an importance property. And the reason for that is because we have misspelled importance up here in the actual property. So I'm going to correct that. 
and then repaste our formula here, submit, and we now see that we have the corresponding action returned for the combination of urgency and importance. Now, if urgency or importance is blank, this formula is going to return some unintended values. And in such cases, we really just want to return an empty text string. And in your work with if functions, you'll often encounter circumstances like this where you need to accommodate special needs. And when you encounter those situations, what you can do is you can wrap your full formula in an outer containing if function where your original formula becomes the third argument and your first argument can test for that special circumstance. So we'll do that here with our Eisenhower formula. We are going to create a line break at the top and open up another if function. And the first argument of that outer if function is going to test whether urgency or importance is blank. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the or function. And if you want to learn more about the or function, you can look at the formula cheat sheet on Notion VIP. So for the first argument of or, we want to know is the length of the urgency property equal to zero. So we're going to use the length function, which you can also learn about in the cheat sheet. So is urgency equal to zero? Close that out. And then the second argument is going to be the same, but it's going to test the importance property. So this is going to return either true or false. And if it's true, that means that one of the properties is blank, in which case the second argument of our new outer if function needs to be just an empty string. That's what you want to return in the case of a blank urgency or importance property. That's that one-off circumstance. And then the full third argument of this new outer if is going to be our original Eisenhower formula. So I'm just going to indent our full original formula to make it our third argument. And we'll need one more parenthesis here because we now have a new if. So what we can do is copy it, paste it, copy it again, come back into our action property, paste it, and once again, we have an error to resolve. And what we did here was included this closing parenthesis in the wrong place for our length function. So we will update those and then recopy, paste, recopy, come back into our action property, paste again and submit. And now our formula is clean. And if we convert any of these urgency or importance properties to blank values, then we can see that our action property returns a blank string versus those unintended outcomes it would have otherwise returned. And then lastly, we can use nested if functions to prioritize these tasks automatically according to their actions and then sort by priority. So what we'll do is we'll add another formula property. We'll call it priority. And we'll come down to our code block and we'll clean it out to start fresh and we'll start a new if function. And for the first argument, the first test that we want to conduct is to see if the action property is equal to do. If it is equal to do, we want to return the number one. If it's not equal to do, we want to test to see if it's equal to delegate. So we'll start another if function, our first nested if as the third argument of our outer if. And in this case, we want to test if action is equal to delegate. And in those instances, we want to return the number two. And if it's not delegate, we want to test once again, and this time test to see if it's equal to schedule. So we will paste our nested if here and change delegate to schedule, make it a three. And then one more time, we want to nest an if, this one 
to test whether action is equal to eliminate, which we can prioritize as four. And so at this point, we know that it's not eliminate, schedule, delegate, or do. It's going to be one of those blank values, which we want to prioritize as five. So we can copy these contents, paste into our URL bar, copy again, come back to our priority property, paste, submit. And you can see that according to each Eisenhower action, these tasks are prioritized. If we eliminate the value of an urgency or importance, we should see a priority of five. We do. So we can take this view of tasks and we can sort it according to that priority property and then maybe hide that priority property since we don't necessarily need to see it. We just need to use it for sorting. So that's the versatile if function for which you'll continuously find more and more uses as you work with databases. And if you hit any roadblocks, I'm all ears on Twitter at William Nutt.